Hey guys, uh, because of the comments of the last video and a few videos, uh, we need to do a Basics 101, the Foundation of Reality video. There's nothing more important than this. We can chase a million different things. We can discuss a million new topics, the new rabbit hole, the new breadcrumbs. Nothing's more important than this. This is all we have. This is all we've learned. Maybe it's all we will ever learn collectively. We can then follow our own path, go on our own spiritual journey. But this right here is, is all we have, but it's all we need. And we, we know this, and we, we come to these areas, and then we seem to forget. This is everything, okay? If this is, if this is the last video I ever make, it's not going to be, I hope. But this would be appropriate, because it's all I've learned, it's all we've learned, it's all that matters. Okay, just start the basics. If we chase this stuff as reality junkies, never forget this stuff, because this is everything. <clears throat> what do we know? To go to the base root level, what do we know? We know this reality, at least for us, those we say, people who can see, or don't fall for it, or don't, uh, don't really think there's a Republican Party and a Democrat Party and ridiculous things like that and ridiculous constructs. We don't fall for it. But how is it possible there is now, like I've said a few videos back, just an endless number of things to chase? Now that also means <clears throat> reality or what we thought was real back when we were asleep or however you want to say it everything is is breaking down or has already broken down i'm not even going to go into the go into the examples i've done that many many times over the years everything's breaking down you could chase everything every topic as a conspiracy or something that is presented as one way when when we look into it is not that at all it's something entirely different it's no different than a you know a sum, sum, summarization of what a Jordan Maxwell has said over the years. Nothing is as it seems to be. Okay, the, my point is, how is that possible? How is that possible? And then don't don't really jump to conclusions. You probably think where I'm going with this is uh, he's going to push simulation theory or he's going to push matrix. I'm not I'm not going to push uh, or, or discuss the, the nature of reality itself, the sliding scale. Who thinks it's more like the movie The Matrix? Who thinks it's more real? And where do we uh, vary along that scale? I'm not even going there because ultimately what I'm about to say affects us all the same way. See, how is it possible? Okay. Now, it's only possible that there is a rabbit hole to chase in every single possible topic and area of existence if the system, the reality generation system itself, no matter what you believe that to be, wants you chasing it, or at least truth community. Let's just stay here. We will go to general friends, family, and neighbors later. Just us. It only is possible if the system itself is designed to create it. Now, forget the, the specifics. What ultimately, you know, uh, is it designed, what is it, what is it trying to do? And it's and always take the simplest approach. It simply wants us chasing what's out there, no matter what it is. Somebody in a comment said, Matt, do you prep? You're not focusing on the right topics. The California fires. Um, mud floods planes or no planes it does it baits the, what is reality itself here trying to do to us it's obvious here's a hook here's a bait what's this bait called mud floods anybody going for it i'll oh, put a lure on it maybe a flash under the water anybody going for it hmm no hmm we will 
Crash two planes in the World Trade Center that most people will think aren't planes will create a huge controversy. What actually went into these World Trade Centers? We know they went down, but we don't we don't really know much else than that. And then we'll have endless debates. What actually went in? And how come if there are supposedly over 30,000 video cameras that could have been pointed in the general vicinity of World Trade Center 1 and 2, there are only 10 blurry images. How come those blurry images haven't been enhanced or remastered or how come the original HD versions of those videos haven't been re-released and we'll just get them all oh that's real good bait put it on the hook anybody going for it and when we line up to go oh let's chase it let's chase it that's what it wants that is what this reality wants it doesn't matter who's doing it it doesn't matter let's ponder what creatures behind the final curtain um, who did who did Dick Cheney, George Bush's handler, report to? You know, Jared Kushner seems like a creepy middleman. Who does he report to? Who's behind that last curtain? Is it is it an AI, artificial intelligence that hijacked our reality? Is it uh, Satan itself? Is it interdimensional aliens communicating us through CERN? That's another endless set of breadcrumbs, and they want us playing Clue. Who done it? Colonel Mustard in the study. We don't know, and we will never know. That's the nature of this reality construct. Go to the very base level. We just know it's all whatever it is, is baiting hooks, and wants us chasing. Now, what does that mean? The root level. It means, well, I know exactly what I should do based on what it wants me to do. I know that whatever it is, Whatever is in control here is sinister. It's not looking out for me. It prepares my vaccines. It delivers me an 80,000 page tax code. It presents all the bullshit I see on David Muir, Plastic Man's news, where he, now he's talking about home fires in Chicago. He's, the world news is actually talking about fires and things that just the local news used to talk about. Any way to get you your anxiety up and your fear levels up, and your that's what it wants. So... Uh, you know, who, it's it's baiting its hook. So I know what to do, not to take it, to stop looking outside. I know what to do. It means looking inside. Now I don't know what that answer is inside. I don't know exactly what I need to do for spiritual development to uh, enhance myself, to foster soul tokens, to level up, to have a chance of of beating this reality of getting out of here if you think it's a soul trap i don't know but what's beautiful is they've shown us which directions not to walk so maybe that only leaves one direction left you know i, I again at many times i some some people have commented and said what does that mean looking inside i don't know yet i don't have all the answers I'm not some monk that's lived at the top of the tibetan monastery and have communicated with uh with my my ancient ancestors through my animal guides i haven't no i'm not there yet but i uh, what i am is what i've been is I'm, i observed what i call the system the reality generation system i'm an observer of it i see what it wants i see what directions it wants to, the pied piper wants to lead the lemmings i can that i, I i'm good at so I'm very, I'm very happy and pleased that I, I, I've narrowed the direction down. And no matter what you believe that direction is, it's not about chasing anything. Mud floods or the, the next conspiracy or rabbit holes. So, okay, that's what it wants. Okay, that's, that's basic number one. Um, the, along uh, you know, the same lines of, of the basics, uh, we have these comments over the years where people say uh, they just want to kill us. Bill Gates, the system, dot, 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 related to the government, they just want to kill us. Uh, no. Okay. Uh, it's very likely they could have done that a long, long time ago with the thousand-year technology or the 150-year technology that they have, that we're 150 years advanced in terms of what they give us. Um, no. I mean, they could have done a, a virus or that they were vaccinated for that we're not. Or No, they need us. That's obvious. They need us. Who's they? What is the creature in the back room? Who knows? Who cares? It doesn't matter. 
they, whatever they are, need us. Sure, they can kill a little segment of us off and create, and, and the, the fear resonance goes out ar around them. They can drum up the conditions for war, so we go and fight in it, and that kills us. And they can drum up unnatural uh, wildfires, and that kills a, a segment of us. And that, that okay, it seems like, they, but they collectively, no, they just, they're not going to kill us, okay? It would have happened. Well, what do they need us for? They don't need us to build roads or to work in their factories because they need more money. They don't need money, whatever these creatures are, okay? They need, just like Poltergeist, the, the beast creature, and we are Carol Ann in the light, okay? It, it, it feeds whatever it is. It feeds and gets some sort of sustenance from us, okay? Now, I don't have the specifics here, but the evidence is overwhelming. We can see what? The visible light spectrum, which is one half of one half of one half of one half of one percent of like all the possible frequencies and radiation frequencies and, and wavelengths in the universe, whatever the universe is. Um, so when, when, when a psychic says, I can see your aura, I, you know, I believe that. I believe we do give off an aura. Or if, if they whip us into a state of anger, fear, stress, worry, anxiety, that it could resonate out um, almost like a glow. And then the, the Dementa, the Harry Potter Dementa creatures could actually suck from it. I don't know if they actually feed from it, but it certainly seems like it. So they, they need us. It's, it's very similar to the Matrix metaphor. In the Matrix movie, they needed the people in the pods to harness BTU energy. But that, that to me, that's just a metaphor. For they, the matrix needs humanity for some sort of life-giving sustenance, whatever it is. If we would know what creature's behind the final curtain, we would know by now we're probably never going to know. The constant search for it is simply another baited hook that it wants us debating over. So look, this is 101 stuff. This is obvious. Okay. Now, society itself... Um, and they just want to kill us because it, it, this also gets back to a, a sidebar conversation goes into the the uh, quantum reality creation ability of real spirited human beings collectively we, we should talk about that that here there's a lot of merit to that that collectively we create reality and but before I get into that I just wanted to mention a few things the nature of the society that they've laid down, again, is, is worth talking about. Worry, fear, stress, anxiety. It's fight or flight. Fight or flight doesn't just mean like uh, Jason with the hockey max is coming. you got to run as fast as you can. Fight or flight is also this general level of stress. Or like a bird is always looking around. It's always looking around like it could be attacked at any time. And that's the, the general level of anxiety, fear, learned helplessness that this society breeds in us. I believe literally, vampirically, they feed from it. It's so obvious to me, even though I don't know the exact mechanism or the nature, or exactly how it's accomplished, exactly what's fed on, by whom, but all you have to do is observe it. Most of the stresses in life, it's 2018, could have been eliminated a long time ago. But they, they not only are not eliminated, they perpetuate. It's more, you have more mothers and fathers running around with their kids and keeping up with the Joneses and more problems with schools. And schools uh, introduce new methods of teaching that make no sense so the parents can't help like Common Core. And email and technology, we, we get our, you know, business executives, oh, just, yeah, you covet those business executives that work for Exxon and Microsoft and Pfizer and make $300,000 a year. Those people are on their emails Sunday night. They're on their emails every night of vacation. They're on their emails at the pool around vacation. It's a general level of stress that they can't ever get away from. It's something the system feeds from. So not only, what I'm saying is, if anything was real about the society construct. What is government supposed to be? What are you know uh, modern man pushing 
technology, technology that's supposed to make our lives easier. If anything was real, a lot of these, these what we consider the stresses of life that we just think must be there would have gone away a long time ago. I've talked about it many times, even things like the, the, the 80,000 page tax code. If anything was real, I just love talking about this one, a senator in 1983 would have stood up and said, why are Waffle House waitresses in one-third of America subject to this thing that Warren Buffett is? Let's just, let's just make it so they have a half-page tax code. And the, if anything was real, the entire Senate would have stood up and said, yeah, why are we screwing the people that we love so much? Let's just give the Waffle House waitresses a half-page. Here's your income, blah, blah, blah. And there's no stress. See, see, it wouldn't be this constant stress about paying your taxes if anything was real if you miss a property tax payment um, if anything was real the you'd get a phone call or you'd get a, a nice memo saying we appreciate you being a, a valuable member of this community in this township we just want you to, to know that you missed your property tax payment property taxes are important because they help pay for this that and the swing set and please call us we want to work with you and uh, you know you have 15 more days but eventually you know if not we're gonna have to you know take some steps Hey, nice for all these people or what you you would read these letters and say oh these people want to work with me but what it's always fear-based isn't it it's always fear-based and we just think it has to be that way it has to be that way it doesn't have to be that way it is it is a it's a it's a manifestation of what the system needs it's a manifestation of the system itself so you miss your property tax payment you get this glowing red letter warning your property will you know cease and desist or your property will be foreclosed upon in 15 days sheriff will take action you have missed payment you must do this that it's just like oh your anxiety level goes through the roof you start to shake you start to worry uh, debt collectors calling in it doesn't have to be this way across the board when, and we're talking about when any facet of society deals with what is considered now to be their nemesis when you go out to the to the uh, mailbox and there's a big envelope with top left corner says IRS do do people say to themselves oh well, these are these are just it's a government buy and for the people they're just friendly people and we're, we'll Oh, there's nothing to worry about. We'll get to the bottom of it. Maybe I missed a, a payment here or there. Well, well, I can't. Actually, I'm looking forward to working with the good people at the IRS. But what happens? Fear, stress, incredible release of adrenaline, no sleep. What happens when the cattle rancher gets a, the same letter from BLM, Bureau of Land Management? Remember the Bundy Ranch stuff? You know, it's it'll be. Uh, we found a a, a little you know some wet mud in your backyard and that's now a wetland so we're pushing all your cattle off off your property you have to cease and desist i mean what happens when a small radio station gets a letter in the top left that says fcc oh i can't wait to to work with those nice people you see what i'm saying it doesn't have to be this way and if anything was real it would have been fixed a long time ago even the president, if anything was real about an elected official, would have stood up in Congress and said, "Why do the why do the people fear when they get a letter from these these pseudo uh, these these agencies uh, uh, or or, or uh, executive administrators of government and government laws like all these agencies and FAA and FCC and IRS and Bureau of Land Management? Why do the people fear these? We need to work on this." We need to let people know this is a government by and for the people. If, if See, you understand where I'm going with this. So the entire system, there is almost no other explanation. We put worry out into the ether. Something sucks from it. We put fear out. Anger. You know, they, they want the, the system is so screwed up in terms of how government presents itself to us. It wants us angry at it. Something feeds from it. So we know we know what to do, don't we? We start by not giving it what it wants. We start by focusing inside. We, we start eliminating attachment. Attachment, the, the, the worry of losing, in this, in this realm, material possessions, feeds the general ether, anxiety, stress, fight or flight, anxiety. So, yeah, we're, we're probably not prepared to go live in a cardboard box. But get rid of, you know, attachment doesn't just mean also material possessions or not buying the next Corvette. It also means... 
you know, these this group of friends wants me to constantly go out and run around, um, you know, the Lincoln Park, Chicago, and just spend a lot of money and run that rat race, and I'm not doing it anymore. I don't need that status and being like the American psycho and pulling out my business card and making sure my business card is as good as his business card. And I'm, I'm leaving that that rat race lifestyle behind. That's eliminating attachment or what you're expected to do, what your friends and families and neighbors think you need to do to fulfill your standing in the community. I quit that. I told you quitting certain things. I've quitting quitting certain things has been the most empower, empowering thing I've ever done because it was for me it was a tremendous exercise in breaking the script. The script said I needed to do this, that, and this. And I one day I, a friend of mine helped me say, "Just why are you going to do it? Just quit that. Don't do it." And it, I broke the script. And it was so I it was almost euphoric. I, I never felt so good for a few weeks and I was and I was thrilled I made that decision. Um but but that is the most important part of this whole struggle is just that these basics not figuring out if a tartaria really existed or figuring out if uh, why the system would have sent out a Robbie Parker to smile and laugh or you know make a little joking gesture where the day after his kid was supposedly gunned down and did they want us to notice that did they put that out there on purpose or was that just a mistake uh, that just doesn't i mean it's it, it, it's fun to ponder that at times if you have the right frame of mind but it's this these are the this is what's important what are do, what do they want from us simply do the opposite okay um that's it. I mean, that that is it. I mean, the, the the last piece of this is there's a lot of theories as to what this reality is. Is it a test? Are we in a prison planet? These creatures hijacked reality. We're stuck here. You know, our souls trapped. All these theories. Okay, all these theories. But one theory that's not talked about very much I have uh, in this Your Soul versus the System series is these George Bush creatures were actually put here by us it's a test it's a test it potentially could be you know where did they come from we put them here potentially because again if, if, you're, if your existence um, is just the golden age you come into this life, incarnate, it's the golden age, the way it's been described. We've all seen these YouTube videos and we've read about it. Oh, it just, there was a time way back when, when the weather was perfect, just a right mix of sun and clouds and all the crops grew on their own and people just frolicked naked underneath the apple tree and uh, the apples dropped down and they ate the apples. They didn't have to plow, they didn't have to hunt. They just, you know, every so many hours they had certain sexual needs and if there was anybody around, they they took care of them. If not, they jerked themselves off every few hours, but they just frolicked around naked, and that's what life was. The golden age, as it's described to us. Maybe that's when Saturn was in low Earth orbit and was right there. I mean, all this stuff. But that's a, that's, you don't learn anything in that type of existence. You know what seems like a fast track to getting your ass kicked and learning a lot? Is this existence. And I know Dan, like at the Overwatch channel, would say this can't be a test or a test you know we designed I don't want to put words in his mouth he's a good guy I like Overwatch Channel a lot but he's like this can't be at least he maybe he's changed but six months back a year back this can't be a test we don't know the rules we don't know the right answers or the wrong answers how to take the test we were born knowing nothing coming in but I disagree it certainly could be a test the George Bush creatures might be there for a reason so we notice what not to do what path not to take then how do we improve ourselves it certainly be, can be a test because we're, learn, we're we're winning we're observing what the creatures want what do they want from us how do they want us to behave why do they want us ch- chasing the next Kim Kardashian scent or ch- looking forward to the next horrible bastardization of the Star Wars franchise made bad on purpose yeah on purpose 
I know that I, mean, I shouldn't have even said that because that's opening up a new can of worms. People might have not have seen my videos from a few years back. But no, when a seventh grade group of Star Wars, uh, like the Star Wars Club, at seventh seventh grade in the middle school down the road, can put together a better storyboard and more believable characters than than endless big deep pockets at Disney combined with LucasArts and Pixar and J.J. Abrams, it's bad on purpose. Okay? So they want you, not only do they want you coveting the next Star Wars movie and waiting for that, they want you arguing about why it was so bad. And look at, go go search, have you searched through how many Star Wars videos there are about people presenting really, really well done videos? Spent a lot of time, a lot of effort as to how bad the new franchise is how kathleen kennedy just destroyed everything and to me to me it's like that's just another worm on a hook and it's just the the matrix or reality says well we can distract this group with this we can distract this group with that it, that's what it does i mean it's so obvious so look, we're oh, as reality junkies, we're always going to look to uh, look into certain things, watch certain videos, but just never, never chase. Always keep these basics in mind. Know every time we look outside of ourselves, we're giving the system something that it wants, something it essentially needs for sustenance. Um, these George Bush creatures might have been put here by us, for us, so. Coming in to this existence or this this realm or this incarnation with no information, with no maybe somebody said right before we incarnated here, they, there was like a a little bit of a talk and said, you know, there's a big risk to going into this earthly realm. You're going in with nothing. You don't know anything. You're going to be tempted by a million different siren songs, a million different sea harpies. You know that 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 you know like kim kardashians to to the to the um you're going to be tempted with drugs and alcohol and addictions and temptations and you're going to be distracted and you're going to be put into fear by little david muir plastic men characters on the news saying that little fat man in north korea is going to drum up the next he's going to drum up the next world war and russia just did a flyby right over they just flew their their bear fox trots over the uh, carrier group and is that going to lead to hostile and uh tension with russia could that be the next war and they want to elicit fear somebody might have said you go into that earthly realm most people lose okay but if you if you actually can level up if you can find the soul tokens if you can succeed if you can find the true path in the midst of all that debauchery in the midst of all that chaos in the midst of all those distractions all those lures and baited hooks if you can do that then you're fucking fast tracked. Your soul is fast tracked. And maybe that's why we came here. Okay? So those George Bush creatures, the uh maybe I should rename them the Dick Cheney creatures or the or the uh, Johnny Depp creatures or anything represent that that's represented by politics or Hollywood or you know anything of that system could be here for it's just it's very simple. They're here to take us off the path of whatever the true path is. That's their role. Now, maybe maybe we didn't put them there. Maybe something else put them there, but it still could be part of the test. But it's so simple. Once you can see their, their pathetic little strategies, that everything is just, you know, like a cat toy. You know, you, you, a cat just can sit there, for, and then you, put, you, you pick the mouse up, and it's like a lure to a fish, and all of a sudden the cat is interested, and you throw it over here, and it chases, it chases. That's what, those, what the Hollywood, the NFL, the bread and circuses, politics, that's all it's designed to do. Maybe the most rudimentary part of winning the test is just, like I've said in the last video, it's just... Here, here you go. Chase this. I don't play this game. I play the game of strengthening what I am, who I am, soul tokens, spiritual enhancement. That I don't... All these games, we don't play these games. Homie, don't play that. It's not complicated. 
these channels that make it out to be super, super, super complicated, another distraction. There you go. There, there, it's another distraction. I think it's that simple. Keep a hold of these basic principles in anything you do or pursue. And uh, I think we'll be a leg up over the other people in this realm, no matter what they are. Well, I've, and I've actually, I mean, there's so many different, I, I should, shouldn't just throw this out at the end, this is a big topic, but there's so many, so many different theories on, you know, w you know, if we decided to come into this incarnation or whatever we come in here with, we come in with a certain spiritual light and we can either foster it and, and grow it and enhance it or just like, you know, the, the Pope likely did a truth drop. These things are all on purpose. When the Pope a year and a half ago, the Pope slipped and said, uh, bad people don't go to hell. Uh, bad people go to the abyss. Or their souls just go to the abyss. Their souls go to nothing. And then, of course, there was that big controversy. Well, he told that to an atheist who he plays checkers with, and the atheist said he wouldn't publish it, but then he ran out and published it, and he wasn't supposed to publish it, and he took the Pope out of context. No, that's all part of the truth drop. In my opinion, that message was meant to get out. I don't know exactly how to interpret that, what the Pope said, that bad souls don't go to hell, they just go to nothing. But it's I've always kind of thought that is possible. We come into this existence, one of the, one of the, uh, you, co you come into this hardcore existence, tons of reward, tons of risk. We sense that, don't we? That's why, you know, it, it, it's the opposite of, you know, to me, the cerebral sloth of atheism. Oh, just, here's atheism. Something blowed up, something blowed up in the universe, and the science tells us that things can't go, there's always a state of entropy, everything goes towards chaos, you know, you drop the broken glass, it stays broken pieces, it'll never form back into a glass in a trillion years, so everything goes towards entropy, but we had the, the Big Bang and the universe just blowed up, and then in the biggest violation of one of the most hardcore scientific principles that all these eggheads like Stephen Hawking hang their hat on, like uh, the principle of entropy, things always go towards chaos. Well, then how did life form? How did the most, how did, how did complete and almost perfect order form from the highest degree of chaos and entropy you possibly can imagine? The Big Bang blowed up. It's, it's nonsensical. I mean, it's completely nonsensical. So, so the the atheists will they, they just you know they just think well that's what happened and we're here and uh, you know I guess I don't know what I got uh, about thirty some years left we just go to nothing. What? No, I think that's also the, here to distract. You just think that well what the hell do what thou wilt, jack yourself off and do what thou wilt. No, if you get in touch. You know, do rolled booms, uh, quantum resting, and meditate, and go inside. And you, so, well, no, this. The, look at the way these creatures are so intent on on playing their Pied Piper flute and trying to lead us one way or another. And this gets. I should bring back the reality creation, the quantum reality creation. It's like they can't build it themselves. It seems like. I'm not talking about building bridges or they can building new Amazon.com factories for Jeff Bezos and his Blue Origin. He has another spacecraft that goes up just like that fraud Sir Richard Branson and that fraud Elon Musk or Lone Scum. And they're, no, these guys can't, they can't build reality themselves. They need to play the little flute. So we run in that direction. We run towards their sick, perverted agenda. And we run and create the reality that they want. And um, they, they, no, they, they need us. They likely need us for reality creation itself. Literally. I believe that. Okay. So, um, you know, right there is another whole topic of just, uh, you know, how many, how many people does it take to, to say, I don't play that and starve them out. And the reality creation they want is maybe that's why everything is breaking down. Maybe that's why everything now is breaking down. Maybe that's why uh, just today I saw a video saying the sun isn't even a gas. It's a. It was presented by somebody that com seems to be a complete genius. It was a very seemed to be a brilliant presentation as to why the sun is likely a, a liquid and all of. Then if you have to reconsider, this guy is basically saying then you have to reconsider everything. Uh, 
in, in astronomy. Well, I, I know that. I, you know, I, you, who are you talking to here? I know NASA's lied about everything. I know basically pretty much everything Carl Sagan has ever put out about the billions and billions of stars and galaxies. And it's to me, I don't buy any of it. But 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 in terms of, I mean, so it's already broken down for us. But this video saying is almost like a presentation you could send to the average person and say, watch this guy's lecture, and it it it, it almost you're gonna you're going to start to question what the sun is after watching this. So everything's breaking down. And maybe that's why. Maybe maybe so many people have jumped off jump ship that they they needed all of us running in the same direction to create their sick perverted reality and maybe that's why everything is breaking down. You know, to me this this isn't physical all this stuff. This is this is a reality construct that likely we're creating ourselves being led by the sick you know, perverted uh, shepherd trying to herd the sheep, which is us, you know, the, the, the creatures, the George Bush creatures. So, oh boy, I don't know, what was what was that other thing I was trying to mention at the end? It was very important. Um, oh boy, not about uh, quantum reality creation, but, um, oh God, I don't know, you talk this long, I'll, I'll pick it up some other time. Thanks, guys.